Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today's slide comes to us from a workshop participant. They sent it to me before a workshop last month and asked me, you know, what do you think of this slide? Uh, we think it's pretty good. It communicates our message. Well, let's take a look at the slide and, and I'll give you some comments on it. So what they're talking about in this particular slide, they have uh, done some tests. This is from the area of education and they've done a test and this was specifically testing mathematics and they were showing uh, how does the score uh, that you get on this test depend on what course you took, the highest course you took. And so uh, the second build comes on and here is our graph. Now a few things to note on this graph. First of all, there are the horizontal lines going across. I'm not sure what they really add to the understanding, but one of the other challenges and probably one of the biggest challenges is the fact that when you look at the first uh, course, Algebra 1 or below, score is 110. And you look at the last course on the right, Calculus 192. When you look at the size of those bars, the Calculus bar is over five times height of Algebra 1 and below, which suggests from a visual uh, perspective, it suggests that somebody who takes calculus scores five times better on this test than somebody who takes algebra one or below. That's an incredible difference. Five times. Actually, that's not true. Because they have taken the vertical axis, which is the measurement axis in this case, and they have altered it, it doesn't really start at zero. It says zero, but it doesn't really start there it causes t distortion and the audience won't get the right message. In fact, they'll make up their own message. Another problem with this is the average. The overall or the averages on the far left, 152, what they are wanting you to do as an audience is to look at the average compared to each of these scores based on the course. And it's very hard to do because the average is way over there on the left and you're having to kind of mentally figure that out. So. What I did with this graph, I, I, I'm, I have no problem with it being a column graph, by the way. I think that's a, a good choice for the visual. But I made some changes to, to make it more uh, impactful and better for the audience. Here's what I did. First of all, I have a proper headline. Uh, in the previous slide, it just simply talked about results. Yeah, but what do the results mean? Well, what I did here, and this is again the first step in the quick method that I talk about in the book, is to create a headline that has the key message as a summary. So taking higher level courses correlates with higher test mathematics scores. Now, that's exactly the message we want them to get. The visual is simply going to illustrate or reinforce that message for the audience. What I've done in terms of setting up this particular uh, column graph, along the uh, horizontal axis, I have the various courses as we had before, but what I've done is I've added a, a label sort of right down at the bottom of the slide that, that gives us an indication which are the lower level courses, which are the higher level courses. This might be necessary for an audience who really isn't familiar with these courses. If you had an audience that was uh, educators that knew about them, that's fine, but people who are not in this field may not know what those courses are. I started the vertical axis at zero, truly at zero so we can see where the scores are. And the overall average, instead of making you compare back and forth, I actually embedded it right into the graph. So now when I explain it, I can talk about our, our lowest uh, level course, Algebra 1 or below. They score below the average. Geometry, Algebra 2, Advanced Mathematics now scores above the average, and Calculus scores well above the average. Now with this visual, we are easily able to do the comparisons and have the audience come to the conclusion that we want them to come to. This is something that a number of people uh, who are presenting, it could be this type of data education, but in uh, business or any other field where you have to present results against an average or a standard, this is a typical type of a of visual that will be much more helpful to your audience than uh, simply just throwing all the data up. So here's some of the lessons that we can learn when presenting data compared to an average or a standard. First of all, as we do with every slide, as I suggest you do with every slide, is create a headline so that key point that you are trying to make is totally obvious. There is absolutely no uh, discussion about what it is that you want the audience to get from this too often we're tempted to just put the name of the data or results as the uh, as the title at the top of the slide. It really doesn't help the audience at all. 
when you're showing results, make sure that it is true. The, the differences being shown visually are true differences. So always start with a zero based axis on the measurement axis. Now that could be vertical or horizontal depending on the type of graph or chart you're using. But make sure the differences are true or otherwise people will come to conclusions that are not actually correct. With an average, embed it right in the data. The comparison is easier if the data and the average are right together so people can visually, oh yeah, that's above or below or right at the average. Don't make them try and visually go back and forth. Uh, Professor John Sweller of the University of New South Wales talks about the split attention effect and when we have something we want to compare in two different spots visually and we're having to go back and forth, understanding goes down. That's why you want to embed the average right in the middle of the data. And finally, build the graph in some logical order. You saw what I did uh, in the after graph is I built it from lowest course to highest course. That's a logical progression in this particular set of data. I don't know what the logical progression is going to be in your set of data, but figure out what it is so that it makes sense. It has context. Again, that's the third step in the quick method in the book. It has context for the audience. When you're presenting data compared to an average, keep these lessons in mind. If you want more information on the book, go to www.visualsliderevolution.com. More information on my training, workshops, consulting, speaking at conferences, videos, uh, other resources, go to my main website, www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. This has been Dave Parody with another Slide Makeover video podcast.